Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn about web application firewall and this is a feature of Azure Web Application Gateway. As you may already know, Azure Application Gateway is a web traffic load balancer that enables you to manage traffic to your web applications. I have done few videos. I will link them down below. Please go ahead and watch them before watching this video. In those videos, I'm showing you how to configure them and also the features that application gateway has such as backend pools, HTTP settings and things like that. And web application firewall is also a feature that application gateway has and this provides centralized protection for your web applications from common exploits and vulnerabilities. A centralized web application firewall makes security management much simpler. And web application firewall has mainly three features. This will protect your web applications from attacks without modifying your existing code base. Also, Azure web application firewall can monitor and log your attacks. This could be logging to a log analytics workspace or Azure security center. You can detect these malicious attacks. There are a lot of customizations that you can do to web application firewall. To detect and prevent these malicious attacks, you can write your own customization rules such as IP filters and geo filters. Application Gateway WAF can protect your application from SQL injection attacks, cross site scripting attacks, and common protocol violations and anomalies. Protection against crawlers and scanners and detects web application misconfigurations and also it can do JSON and XML body inspections as well. And finally, you can go one step further and write your own policies for this. You can write geo filters and IP filters and things like that. And I'm planning to do another video on custom policies. And when you configure this, you have two options. You can configure this for detection or prevention. When you enable detection, web application firewall does not block the malicious request. It just log the information and metrics about the request and it will allow the malicious request to reach your backends. But when you enable prevention, web application firewall will block the request and it will return 403 HTTP response to the sender or the malicious user. I'm sure you have heard about Web Application Firewall and Azure Firewall as well. Now let's understand the differences between these two services. Web Application Firewall protects web applications and Azure Firewall protects Azure VNet resources. And Web Application Firewall is a feature of another Azure service. It could be Application Gateway or it could be Azure Front Door. Azure Firewall is a standalone feature on Azure. Since Web Application Firewall is built for web requests, it supports HTTP or Layer 7 protection. Azure Firewall can provide inbound protection for non-HTTP protocols such as RDP, SSH and FTP as well. And also, Web Application Firewall does not provide outbound protection, but Azure Firewall has outbound protection features as well. And in this video, I'm going to create an Azure App Service and then I'm going to host a sample application. Then I'm going to create an application gateway resource with web application firewall features on. And finally, I'm going to show you how detection and prevention modes work in WAF. I'm going to show you how to enable monitoring with log analytic workspaces as well. So let's get started. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create an app service. For that, I'm going to run this script on my Azure PowerShell. Let me do that now. All right, as you can see, our app service is in place now. I'm going into Azure portal and then I'm going to refresh it. And then I'm going to refresh the resource groups. I'm going into the resource group that I have just created and let me click refresh again. As you can see, we have the app service here. Now I'm going to download the published profile so that I can publish a sample application that will help us with our learning. Now I have downloaded the published profile. Now let me go into Visual Studio and here I have wrote a sample application. 
Now let me add this published profile. All right, I'm going to click publish. As you can see, it is getting published now. All right, the application is up and running now. It is a simple application where we have a list of users and if I click here, add the user, I can add a new user. Now that we have our sample application in place, it is time for us to create the application gateway and start to understand how web application firewall works. Now let me go back into Azure portal and I'm going into the resource group and I'm going to click create here and then I'm going to search for application gateway. I'm going to click create here. If you want to learn more about application gateways and how to configure them, you can go ahead and watch my previous videos. I will link them down below in the description. Now let me configure this. For name, I'm going to call it App Gateway 1 region. I'm going to go with Southeast Asia. Now we have to select the pricing tier. As you can see, we have standard and WAF tiers. You can go with standard tiers if you don't want web application firewall features. Since I am going to talk about web application firewall in this video, I'm going with this tier. And also you can change this later as well. Now what about this V2? This is a tier that has more features such as auto scaling, zone redundancy and header rewrites and faster processing and improved performance and things like that. Now if I go with V2 tiers as you can see the auto scaling features gets enabled. I'm going with WAF V2 tier for this video and I don't want to enable auto scaling and one instance is okay for me and the firewall status is enabled. This is an important setting. What we tell application gateway here is that whether we need detection or prevention for our malicious requests. As I said earlier, if I select this option, application gateway will detect the malicious requests and it will lock them, but it will allow the request to travel to reach to our backends. But if I select this option here, the malicious user gets a 403 HTTP response. I'm going to keep this one for now and then I'm not going to do any changes here. Since we need a virtual network, let me create one now. I'm going to call it vnet1 and this address range and this address range for the subnet is okay for me. And then I'm going ahead to create a public IP address since we are accessing it from the public internet. And I'm going to add a backend pool. Let me call it BP1. And then I'm going to select the app service that we have created. Let me add that one. And then we need to add a routing rule. I'm going to go with rule one here and we have to create a listener as well. Now, since we are integrating with an app service, we need to enable this feature to forward the host header. I'm going to go with this option, pick host name from the backend target. All right, I'm going to add the routing rule. I'm going to click next to create the application gateway. As you can see, it is getting deployed now. Let's wait for around 10 minutes until this gets deployed. All right, as you can see, our application gateway instance is in place now. Let me go to the resource group and then click on app gateway one. We have a public IP address here. Let me click on it and I'm going to copy the public IP address and then I'm going to paste and go. As you can see, we can access our application with the public IP address of our application gateway. And now it's time for us to understand how web application firewall works. Now, if I go back, to the resource group and the application gateway, we have a tab here, web application firewall. In there, as you can see, we can change the tier and also firewall status and these two modes as well. As you can see over here, we can add exclusions. We can add request headers, cookies and attributes, and we can apply a operator and we can add some text here. We can add exclusions to the firewall. And also, we can specify the max request body size and file upload limit as well. Now, if I go into the rules, 
As you can see, we can specify the rule set. The default one here, as you can see, is three. And if you want to enable or disable, basically modify this rule set, you can do it here like this. Now I'm going to disable this advanced rule configuration here. I haven't done any changes here. And if I go into diagnostic settings, we can attach a storage account or a log analytics workspace to log the events of this web application firewall. Now let me add a diagnostic. I'm going to go with all logs and then I'm going to select this option send to log analytics workspace and then I'm going to keep this setting my default log analytics workspace. Let me provide a name as well and then I'm going to save this diagnostic setting so that we can see what happened in my application gateway. Now I'm going into the app that we have deployed and, and then I'm going to add a new user here. I'm going to select Sarah and that is something that I've already tried. And then for the country, I'm going to insert this script here. Let's see what happens. As you can see, the script that I have inserted got saved in the database. When I load the home page, I can see this message. I'm going to click OK. And as you can see, this app is vulnerable to attacks. I'm going into my Azure portal now and then I'm going into web application firewall and then I'm going to change this firewall mode from detection to prevention. Let's see what happens now. I'm going to save this one. All right. Now let me go back and user and then I'm going to add the same script here. Let me click submit. As you can see now, Azure application gateway blocks my request because it was a malicious one. Now let me go back and change this back to detection mode. Now if I go into the log analytics workspace that I have configured, I'm going to select this one here and let me close this and I'm going to query Azure diagnostics. And as you can see here, if you look at the message field, and as you can see here, our web application firewall that we have configured has logged information about an SSS attack. And this is how Azure Application Gateway Web Application Firewall helps you protect your web applications. Now, if I go back to the application gateway and the web application firewall, the rules that we have here, these rules, they were defined by Azure based on these OWASP identified rules. Now, if you want to define your own rules and policies, you can write custom rules as well. Now, if I search for web application firewall policies and click create here, you will be able to write your own rules and enforce them on your application gateway resources or Azure front door resources or even CDNs as well. This is the end of this video and in the next video, I'm going to show you how to configure a custom web application firewall policy. In this video, we learned about what web application firewall is and then we saw a demo on how to create and configure an Azure application gateway keeping app services as backends and then we saw how to configure Azure web application firewall and how detection and prevention modes work. Plus, we saw how to enable diagnostic settings so that we can access the logs using an Azure log analytics workspace. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below and don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you learned something new today and thanks for watching.